Well, you're listening to Meeting House here on Faith Radio, National Religious Broadcasters 2024 in Nashville. Actor Aspen Kennedy has stopped by Faith Radio Meeting House Media Central here at the NRB convention. And Aspen has a movie, which I guess I could say a greatly anticipated movie that is coming out in August. It's called The Forge. It is the latest movie produced by the Kendrick Brothers, and Aspen is joining us today, lead actor in the film. Aspen, thank you for spending some time with us today here in the Meeting House on Faith Radio. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Well, let's just begin by by talking about your journey. Tell me a bit about your acting background and how it is that you connected with the Kendricks. Yes, absolutely. So I was born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee. I was there all 18 years. I went to Jackson State University um, from 2013 to 2017. But during my sophomore year, I uh, I needed an art elective, and I took Fundamentals of Acting, and um, I fell in love with it. Uh, my professor at the time was a working actor, and he, uh, he encouraged me. He said, hey, if this is something you want to do, you should continue because we have the it factor. Now that I know I had God on my, in my corner. But um, fast forward to graduation, we ended up working on the same show and uh, moved to Atlanta right after graduating and have been in Atlanta since 2017 and been going at it since. So how is it that you and the, the Kendricks got to know each other? Yes, yeah, so I got the audition from my agent uh, last May. And um, I had a few rounds. I had the initial audition, then had three callbacks, a chemistry read. And um, man, when I got the opportunity, I read the storyline, I fell in love with it because I've been a fan of the Kendricks. You know, they work for a minute. And uh, just to be a part of that storyline, my heart definitely wanted to be a part of it and got allowed that to happen. So, Well, there's a, there's a couple of things really, Aspen, that come to mind. You mentioned being a student at Jackson State. Yes. University mm-hmm. and having that elective. And, and yeah. if I can say it like this, mm-hmm. God leading you to exactly. take that fundamentals of acting class. Yes. So as you began to approach mm-hmm. college graduation, yeah. was there a was there a major or a trajectory mm-hmm. that you had? Was there something that you really sensed that you wanted to do, but yet God had another plan was that the story or was it maybe did it unfold in a different way that's exactly the story so I was a mass comm major and I was like okay trying to find my way I was like I don't want to do news reporting or journalism I'm like Lord what is it? I want to do something with television and so as that desire began to birth in my heart uh, that summer of my, after my sophomore year one of my professors she called me she was like hey Aspen um, well let me fast forward well, rewind a little bit so after me taking a class off my year I wanted to find more opportunities but in Mississippi there weren't that many So after praying, all right, Lord, this is what I want to do. You know, if this is something you have for me, I ask that you confirm that. So I kid you not, the next day, my professor calls. She's like, hey, Aspen, I know you're still in uh, Jackson for the summer. I have a film course that will be here for for six weeks if you want to be a part of it, and we would love to have you. So I was like, all right, I just prayed about this yesterday, God, to confirm (laughs) it. Because, you know, you have, like, starting off, you can have doubts sometimes to say, hey, if I really want to do this, if someone asks, like, hey, what have you been in? And I, I don't, don't have anything to say at the time. Like, am I really an actor? So I prayed about it. And the next day she uh, gave me the information about the course for the summer. And uh, the guy who taught the course was someone I looked up to on television for a long time. My sister's sister, his name is Tim Reed. And uh, he led the class and he taught me a lot. So from there, uh, God definitely showed me, okay, when you seek me and when I play something in your heart, if you seek me to see what I have for you, then he opened that door. So that definitely how it worked. that's how it worked out. Did you say Tim Reed? I just want to make sure I'm yeah, hearing. Yeah, Tim, Tim Reed. Tim Reed. Yes. Venus flytrap. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, taking a stroll down memory yeah. lane yeah. here, WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> so he taught the class. He talked to class because uh, I love him on uh, Sister Sister. He played the dad okay. on there. So, uh, yeah, he taught the class, and I learned a lot from him, and uh, he gave a lot of encouraging words, too. So I was like, all right, I feel like I've watched him growing up, and he's saying, like, hey, you're pretty good at this, too. I just have to keep taking those steps with the Lord. So. It just that's how it started off. Aspen Kennedy joining us today here on the Meeting House mm-hmm. on Faith Radio. It is the National Religious Broadcasters Convention 2024 yes. in Nashville. So you talked about trying out auditioning for yes. this movie, new film from the Kendrick Brothers called The Forge. Mm-hmm. Fell in love with the storyline. Yes. Let's, if you would, please set this up yeah. for our listeners. I definitely what, will. What's the storyline? So I can start from the personal side first. So uh, similar to Isaiah, my character in The Forge, uh, I was raised by my mother. Uh, I didn't grow up with my father. So that's kind of the reflection in the story of Isaiah as well. And so, you know, like I said, I want to also do my own films and my own projects as well. So God put the idea on my heart. I'm like, hey, I want to do 
a project that has to do with the father-son dynamic. And so when I saw the storyline, I was like, all right, Lord, this is, you know, this will glorify you. I knew of their work and I knew that, hey, Isaiah goes on the journey to forgive his dad. So in my real life as Aspen in 2019, God put it on my heart to reach out to my dad and let him know like, hey, I don't know what called the division between you and my mom, but, you know, I just want to let you know I forgive you. And so the day that I felt the Lord put that upon my heart, I was actually at the gym working out and I'm like, Lord, you want me to reach out to my dad and forgive him? I'm like, I'm not angry at him. I don't have any bitterness because I just felt like he just simply wasn't around because that was a normal thing growing up around, you know, in Memphis, Tennessee. I, some people just didn't have their father. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. But it felt awkward. So I was like, you know, I sent the text. Um, I got his number from my, my brother and um, I sent it to him and I sent that and he reached back out and was like, hey, like, I've prayed for a long time that one day that we could have this conversation that you would forgive me. Wow. And so after I did that, you know, in my personal life and my career, God has opened so many doors since that moment. And I was just like, man, like a simple test of obedience in my private time led to fast forward to 2023 doing the same thing in a film. So I was just like, man, God, you put that on my heart to see if I was going to obey you and forgive my dad, no matter how awkward it was for me, but to surrender to his will to say, hey, I'll do it. And now doing this film is kind of doing the same thing I, I did in my real life. So when I saw this story, I was like, all right, Lord, like, this is kind of like my life, but it's just what impact? Way let's let's go back to the uh, the Aspen story. Yes. What impact did having that conversation about mm-hmm. forgiveness and extending forgiveness to your father? What impact mm-hmm. did that have on you and on your relationship? Yeah. With him. So definitely, um, you know, as I began to learn more about the compassion in the heart of Jesus Christ, as far as like just forgiveness, I'm like. You know, who am I not to forgive? Even if I don't have anything, I have to set the record clear to say, hey, I have no malice or no anger or no bitterness towards you. You know, the Bible teaches us to honor our parents, our mother and father. And it was a thing where I wanted to make sure that, you know, my con- my conscience and my heart was clear to be able to forgive and extend and have that. Um, you know, like I said, everything doesn't end up in a perfect way, but it's a thing where I definitely wanted to extend love and grace and compassion because I knew that it all depended upon my heart being clear before the Lord so he can use me as a vessel. So um, that's the impact it definitely had on me in terms of um, that action. But, you know, our relationship, now we talk sometimes here and there. He checks in and I see, you know, God is working on his heart too. And I pray for my mother and my father both um, that they, he continues to work in their hearts too. But mm. it's, uh, it's a healing journey for sure. But, um, you know, God has uh, my heart in his hands and I'm re- really grateful about that, man. Well, and I also wanted to find out how it, Mm-hmm. actually resonated with with your dad yeah yeah he um, You're reaching out yes he definitely um like he said he, he expressed to me that he was grateful that i did it and um you know he always prayed that you know one day we could you know that i would forgive him he was like hey i apologize he was honest he was like hey i was you know young and dumb you know i, I should have you know done things better i just didn't have my mindset right he said how you are before the lord now i wish i had a strong relationship with the lord at my at your age now when i was but um, I feel like he's learning a lot, too, because, you know, sometimes I send him scriptures and we talk about the Lord or I send him sermons, too. So I, it's kind of funny because I'm asking God, like, all right, he's my father. I thought I would get this from him. But now God is kind of using me to, like, making sure that we have those conversations uh, spark for me to my, my dad as well. So so back to the storyline of the forge. Mm-hmm. So there was, uh, again, there was that dynamic of the father-son relationship. What's, yes. what's Isaiah's story? Yeah, so Isaiah, uh, his father, and uh, Cynthia, uh, played by Priscilla Shira, um, he left uh, my mom, and um, he cheated on her in the, in the film, and, you know, he left us, and I felt like, you know, for the development of Isaiah's character, you know, just that father figure being in your life is really important, especially when you love sports, just having that, not just anybody in the crowd, but knowing, like, hey, I can make my, doubt, my dad proud. That's one thing he always wanted to, want, wanted to do in my development, but not having him there, I was like, it felt, it felt a void. Like, it was anger. Like, why did you leave? Why didn't you pick me up from practice? Why didn't you, you know, keep your promises and, you know, tell the truth? So just living with those circumstances really encouraged me to, like, when we got to the script in those scenes, it was, it was seamless because I, I lived with that circumstance and it was pretty cool to express. Let's talk about the title. Yes. It's called The Forge. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Heat and pressure. Heat and pressure. But it's, it's a refining process because I believe God – he allows us to be, you know, tried by, you know, tried by fire, and it's this thing where he purifies us in the heart, uh, our mind, um, uh, our intentions, and he wants to 
you know, us to be blameless before him. So it goes, sometimes it takes heat and pressure to be able to, you know, come out as gold on the other side. And as I understand it, based on the trailer, there are mm -hmm. people in Isaiah's life, in yes. your life, that actually bring that heat yes. and yes. pressure, correct? Yes. Yeah, elaborate on Absolutely. On that, so, good. like, the Forge is a group of men, uh, with discipleship, where they pour into, um, you know, discipleship principles, to teaching them about the Lord and responsibility, accountability, which mold and shape him, you know, and put that pressure in a good way to become a strong man. And um, he takes uh, responsibility different. He uh, treats people different. He uh, apologizes to people. He forgives people. So just it truly refines his character. He's a different person towards mm. the end of the film. So I was going to say, what is kind of the, you know, without giving anything away, yes. I don't want to ask a spoiler question mm -hmm. or anything, but apparently was Isaiah a willing participant in this forge process or did mm -hmm. he have to be prodded just a bit? I would say it's somewhere in the middle ground because okay. he didn't know too much about it. Uh, it was mentioned that, well, you'll see in the film that uh, once he begins to meet with his mentor, he thinks it's a part of his job that he gets, but um, ends up being way more. And I feel like God does it in real life. You may think you're doing it for one reason, but God has a different reason in terms of uh, getting his glory through things. So it's a great story, though. Aspen Kennedy joining us today here on The Beating House on Faith Radio, lead actor of The Forge, mm -hmm. the latest from the Kendrick Brothers in theaters, August 23rd. Mm -hmm. This is The Meeting House, NRB, National Religious Broadcasters, 2024. Well, yes. we're continuing to talk about this film, and obviously strong messages of fatherhood, as I understand mm -hmm. it, even as we're having this conversation this day at NRB, yeah. there was a panel discussion or is a panel discussion, maybe even still going on yeah. about fatherhood. Mm -hmm. Now, the Kendricks have taken this fatherhood issue very seriously. If people have seen the film Courageous, they know that yes. was a film about about fatherhood. And, mm -hmm. and you had different or you had men on different parts of their journey. So what is the or what is the particular take or the theme of the, the father-son relationship that's present in this film? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and it's something I shared with the Kendricks in the audition process, too, once we had a meeting. I was like, it's very interesting that God put it on my heart. And again, getting that revelation for the story that I wanted to tell as far as the father-son dynamic. He brought Malachi 4.6 to my heart as far as I will turn the hearts of the father back to the children and the hearts of the children back to the father. So I was like, man, like that's unity, that's relationship, that's what God wants with everyone through Jesus Christ. And so that dynamic and that theme in the film is, you know, it's displayed through when God also says, hey, I'll be a father to the fatherless. Even though Isaiah's father stepped out, he worked through as a vessel of uh, Isaiah's mentor to still teach him principles and what, what it looks like to be a man of God. So like he literally stepped in and he, although he wasn't his biological father, he did pour in like godly principles to say hey this is what a man of god looks like and this is how i treat my wife this is how i respect this is how i respect people's time and this season those principles definitely change his life isaiah's life so what do you think about the importance of godly men in society how mm -hmm. does how does that impact our culture yeah it changes the world um when it's done you know right before the lord because you know when as men and as you know creation we you know, keep our hearts before the Lord. We allow him to pour into us and mold us and shape us and, you know, fill us with his spirit, his love, his power, his authority. You know, we, we're not only just filled, but we have overflow to be able to pour into someone else. You know, like he says, if you exalt Jesus, he then draws people to you, not just for self-exaltation. -exalt it's just, no, I want, the Lord wants to work through people. He wants to get his message to people that typically wouldn't get it if, they didn't happen to look at a movie or typically didn't get it if they didn't happen to listen to a song. So in radio as well, he has everyone in every field to be able to say, hey, I want willing vessels to be able to teach people. This is what Jesus's character looked like. He, he was humble. Um, he exemplified humility at the highest level. He was a great servant. He was strong. He was firm. He stood for truth. And it was a thing where that's what a godly man is. Jesus was the ultimate, perfect, strong, oh, wow. firm, gentle man. And it's like he was a, he was beautiful. Jesus is beautiful, man. Awesome. Yeah. Well, as we can look, as we conclude, just you know, obviously this is a Kendrick Brothers film. Mm -hmm. Your your character Isaiah mm -hmm. is actually the son of the Priscilla Shire. Yes. Character. Yes. The, as I understand it, the Priscilla Shire character in this film is actually related to the character she played in War Room. The sister, yeah. <laughs> so twin sister. Yes. All right. Also, there's another character 
from War Room that actually plays herself. So there is a there is actually a reappearance of Miss Clara from War Room yes. in this particular film. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So it's like a. I guess you could say someone joked earlier. Said like the Marvel universe. You have the Kendrick Brothers <laughs> I was universe. About that, yes. Yeah. It's the Kendrick verse. Yes, because T.C. Stall and she plays my uncle, which he was the husband of Priscilla. And okay. Yeah, so uh, okay. My head's exploding. Yeah, I know, now. man. Okay. I thought T.C. <laughs> was in it. Yeah, he is. So, okay. He is. So, but he is playing a totally different. Yes, he's character. my uncle, Uncle T. Uncle, uncle T. Okay. Yes, he's good. Isaiah's uncle. All right. <laughs> He could, well, anyway. You're right. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm thinking, okay, well, you could have twins married. Twins, anyway. Right. But uh, <laughs> great lineup, people that, mm -hmm. that are familiar with, with some of these characters and some of these actors. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, introducing yes. to, the, the, to the Kendrick verse. Yes. Aspen Kennedy. Yes. How many different roles you may be playing in the years to come. <laughs> I would love to. Hey, I love working with the Kendricks. Um, I learned so much from them just from the heart level. Like the work comes second and the, they keep the Lord first. We had devotion on set every single day and it was just a beautiful experience. It didn't feel like work, you know, because I love what I do. I'm graced to do. But at the same time, it was it was an experience of the Holy Spirit as well to be able to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to not just work and to be a part of something bigger than myself, but I'm also being poured into every single day. That's awesome. And you don't experience that on every single set. So. What website can people go to to find out more about the film? Yes, yeah, so it's www.theforgemovie.com. That's great. Yes. Aspen Kennedy, thank you so much. Thank you. For spending some time with us here on The Meeting House on thank Faith you. Radio.